All right, ladies and gents, uh, welcome to Water Nomad Low Elo Legend Edition. You start with 13 pop in random areas around the map, six fishing ships, seven villagers. You have to build a TC, you have to build a dock, then you have to task all of your fishing ships to fish, and then you need to do everything else. So all that already seems extremely stressful, extremely difficult for low elo players. Um, in the red, we have Vikings for Sancha Panzo. Sancha has played two Water Nomad games in a row, and I was like, okay, so this means this player is probably favoriting Water Nomad to go into a map that everyone else is confused by, and he wants a lot of ELO, right? Like, he wants to get a win streak by capitalizing on everyone else's confusion. Well, he lost. <laughs> I thought he'd come in with a win streak, Water Nomad. No, he hasn't won on Water Nomad, but he has at least played it. And then Blue has never played Water Nomad according to the profile. So, I mean, you've got idle fishing ships, you've got idle villagers. It is really, really tough to find everything. And so far, as long as Red makes a dock, tell me Red has made a dock. Oh, he did make a dock, yeah. So as long as you make a dock, then those seven fishing ships, or six, excuse me, will start dropping off resources. So there, you, you can see some funky stuff on this map, but there's so much food. Usually what you want to do is you want to rush Feudal Age and just go for water control. And Blue, I think, is figuring this out now. So I wouldn't get your hopes up. I feel like this is a potential to be a total stomp. I'd love for this to be some close competitive water nomad, but I don't think this is a map like other maps where there's a lot of different viable strats. Now, normally, you're going to want to win water. Like right now, look at Blue. He's made the dock, but he's like, he can't make anything because he's housed. They really should make it so you start with some houses, I think, on Water Nomad. It's really annoying how you've got to make so many houses. Okay, where's he going? Blue, I was trying to give you some excuses, you know? You could... So you wouldn't look so rough around the edges here. Where are you going? Is this Legend of Corner Boy Part 2? Where are you going? Well, he's finding the enemy. I guess maybe he's scouting for more water buffalo. Is making the houses finally, but is now massively behind. Kind of exactly how I expected this to go. One person has mass confusion. The person who played it before kind of knows what's up. Blue is now surrounding the enemy with his own villagers. But can't build anything because there's no wood in the bank also guys this fishing ship not collecting resources this fishing ship i think is this is i don't know where she's going scouting with it is he just trying to get all the buffalo right now is that the strat to get all the buffalo that might be the strategy <laughs> wait i take it back blue has a plan people look at the scouting holy crap it's just that Blue's plan is very different. And, uh, you know, if you were to compare it to High Level Age of Empires, probably very wrong. Because, you know, a you know, little tidbit of info, if you didn't hear me already. With the amount of food you're going to get from tasking your fishing ships to a closed dock, and then taking the water buffalo, rushing Feudal Age and going for demos, fires, and galleys, and just flooding water is normally the way. Like, I once saw a game... Where Tato used a demolition raft to kill 15 buffaloes. And he was he was streaming in Spanish and he was like Well The Buffaloes! The Buffaloes! That was that was Tato. It was a hilarious clip. So yeah, um You can collect them and you can have 22 times 150. You can have thousands of food, but it's also very possible if you don't have a fast start to feudal. You could lose everything. However, Low Elo Legends is going to deliver yet again, ladies and gentlemen. The meta has not crept in to ruin the land of noobs because we now have a militia from Red. And Red's like, yep, fishing is important on this map, and I don't like the fact he's taking my fish. So let's make militia. And Blue says, I'm going to sail away. Thank you very much. So that, of course, delays the potential uptime for Red as uh, that's a bit of food right there. 
Red also doesn't know where blue is, even though they're close. And blue, oh god. The villagers are stuck in the buffalo. Oh, jeez. Okay, so she can't drop off wood. What about these other villagers to the north of the TC? Also, there's so much groaning. Oh, nope, she's stuck as well. Okay, he's gonna walk the whole way around the buffaloes. Well, you've got some unique problems in Blue's Town, let's put it that way. And he just... <laughs> Guys! I've never seen someone get so many buffaloes! <laughs> he's scouting the corner for more buffaloes. Oh, and he finds them! What? Are you kidding? I gotta look back at the profile. There's no way this guy just loaded up this map for the first time. Maybe I got it wrong. Maybe it was Red who was the one who hasn't played this before. And here I thought he was the expert. What on earth is this? Like, he's got 30 that are alive right now. Let me see. Can I double click now? Of course, I'm trying to click that. He's got 40 on the map that are alive. Of course, a lot of them are coming home. Now, again, it's like terribly inefficient to sail halfway across the map with your fishing ships just to get buffaloes. It's kind of ironic you're using a food source to get a food source. Maybe he doesn't like the taste of fish. But yeah, I mean, forget about Fast Castle. <laughs> We're talking Fast Imp times 100 here with this many buffaloes. That's insane. Uh-oh, this is a problem. I know you're excited and you want Buffalo Guy to do it. But it looks to me like Red is going to make... Oh, no! He's making galleys! Oh, no! So you got this amphibious terrain where ships and land units can move. So obviously having ships which move faster than most land units is going to be strong. Maybe the strategy for blue is to blend in with the buffaloes. Like you ever see those nature documentaries where the one where these people believe they become one of the animals? I'm sure there's been at least one or two people throughout the history of of the world who thought they were a buffalo. And they lived amongst the buffalo, and the buffalo accepted them. I'm not sure about the whole eating the buffalo thing. That's got to be maybe against the rules. But come on, Red. Make a demo, please. He's going for man-at-arms. I guess he doesn't know Blue is there. I just really want him to see the buffalo. That's all I want. Anyways, still creating villagers. There's no rush here for Blue. This, this is... Uh... This is insane. Buffalo's still piling up. I don't think there's a single... Nope, I lied. Okay, you know what? Blue's a noob. He missed out on two buffalo in the south. Still scouting this corner with fishing ships. <laughs> and Red can't find him. Red cannot find him. And he's not using the galleys to look. And I feel like you should always look here, but... Oh my god, look what's back there. What is happening? Red's also only producing out of one dock. It is 600 ELO, so you'd expect them to maybe forget stuff like that. Yeah, there you go. You've now got more galleys on the way. Imagine Blue being Britain's. Imagine him being Tatars, where you get 50% more food on these things. I mean, this is insane. Okay, so maybe this will kick Blue into overdrive. This will make Blue think, okay, maybe I should... Look at Red! He could see the buffaloes! Surely Red can see the buffaloes. He lost his man-at-arms. But Blue should say, yeah, okay, enemy made stuff and has been in feudal age for half an hour, so I should go feudal age too. This is ridiculous. Okay. Blue's like, I didn't have a plan beyond buffalo. <laughs> the great buffalo migration of 2022. They're all getting eaten right now. Okay, so Red really likes the idea of man-at-arms, so has made more. Where is the second one? Oh, it's outside the barracks. Okay. Um, you know, it could use the galleys right now. Isn't using the galleys, so maybe doesn't realize how good galleys are against fishing ships and how good they are against the other things. Okay, see, this is this is not something Red's intending. But the galley is chasing now. 
I think this is good for Blue because Blue needs a slap in the face that says, hey, do something other than what you're doing right now. And, okay, he's sending Militia in. It's funny, though. I don't think Red's controlling this. No, now Red is. Okay. And Militia against Galley. Not what I expected to see when I loaded into this game. And Sancha Ponzo with the micro. Now, also, Blue may place the mining camp here. Blue has scouted the entire map for Buffaloes. And decided, with the enemy being here, to take this stone and gold instead of maybe this stone and gold. I don't know, mate. A transport? He's making more transport ships! Oh my god, guys. You can put water buffaloes in transports, FYI. Is he gonna keep his precious cargo safe? This is a really bad strategy, alright? It's not so far looking like something that will actually lead to success. But now I want to know why he made transports. It was either a misclick, which I don't think can be the case. Because he clicked the first transport before he wasn't futile. So it's not like he pressed T for galley or whatever hockey and got a transport ship by mistake. You can fit five buffaloes in each transport. FYI. And five sheep. And five war elephants. Red, if you rewatch this game and you're wondering what went wrong, buddy, it was just not using your galleys. Oh my god, the transports went up to the dock. <laughs> I guess, you know what it is? Red is just looking at home, you know? Hmm, what do I want? I want an archer range. Let's uh, send these guys to wood. These guys need a job. Maybe send them over to the farms. Yeah, we'll make some farms. And meanwhile, the galleys are in queue, but he just doesn't see this. And Blue is now moving the transport around. I don't understand why. I really don't understand transports. But again, maybe misclicked. And now is looping around to confuse the enemy with transportation vehicles. I guess it's not a vehicle, technically. I wouldn't mind a tower here. I mean, I prefer you make a mining camp anywhere else, but... Oh, is he going to transport the militia somewhere? Where's he going? Also, he's going down here. Does he see? Why? Why, 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 why? Well, it's normally a race to galleys and a race to upgrades. We have the galleys for red. He's not using them. And then we don't have any upgrades yet. So it makes sense. Low elo kind of underselling the the value that water would bring you on a very unique map. There's no map really like it. Castle Age won't come in for some time for Blue. He does have the food as we expected. He is gorging himself on Buffalo constantly. And now he is sailing through the enemy base to look at things with transport. Here comes Red. Red, of course, doesn't see his base now. Has a transport in it, which is kind of funny. And he runs forward with galleys. And he's going to now take out Blue's galleys because Blue has far less of them. And now you have, like, again, Blue. The water buffalo thing was unique, but he's making land units on a map where that doesn't really work well, sadly. Um, now he garrisons. And Tootin TC shoot a bunch of arrows, so you've got to be careful if you're red. And actually, red's going to go home after that. Red really values the people in his town, so he's like, nope. That's not going to happen again. And this all gives Blue a chance. But Blue, the last time you went to Feudal Age, you went to Feudal Age because you got attacked by Man at Arms, and it gave you a wake-up call. That was your next wake-up call right there, buddy. You have a castle for red. Which he, of course, could drop on Blue's face. But he doesn't know that. He's scared of the world. He saw Blue has transports and water buffaloes, and he, he doesn't know how to do that himself. Now we have a second town center for Red. Okay, so he wants to expand his eco a little more. I just want to know what Blue does for food when the water buffaloes are gone. I just want this game to go on a little longer so we can find the answer to that. Actually, what's the food count? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> It doesn't seem as exciting as you would think, right? 
more wood, more gold, and more stone for red. Of course, he has had Viking efficiency with wheelbarrow being in. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, it's already kind of funny how the wheelbarrow upgrade works because there's no actual physical wheelbarrow. What? He just made a fish trap with vills! Since wit. Oh, no, I did see that recently, but I didn't even know. I thought it was a bug. That, of course, can only be operated on by the fishing ship. I don't know how you do that with a vill. Maybe you place it, and then you click it with the vill, and it builds it. Okay, this is like... This is a tour bus that goes around the enemy village a a once a day. But they can't figure out why no one wants to go on it. They're like, it's a free trip around the city. Like, uh, yeah, you're going in the wrong part of town. Okay, that's why no one wants to get on your dumb ride. But I guess in some ways it's distracting. I mean, it's confusing Red. Or at least making Red think twice about moving out. I don't know. And Blue has just had these villagers on stone the whole time. And Red, I guess, hasn't noticed that. Red is more interested. He, he's a peaceful player. He's more interested in protecting himself than he is... Uh... Killing the enemy. I mean, Vikings are also just a much better civ here, guys. Like, their navy's insane. So easy to do what Red is doing already. But he has to utilize it, right? So here he comes. And this is something that could and maybe should have happened a while ago. I have to imagine now that the transports were actually just a misclick for Blue. Who looks like a fish out of water. And soon a player out of Buffalo. These villagers are going to run away. They're like, why didn't you send me to the safe stone? We had so many stones scouted. Why didn't you put me literally anywhere else? Blue didn't really think about that, I guess, at the time, as we see a new TC to relocate. And another TC as well, down here in the amphibious terrain. Meanwhile, the galleys, well, they're not... They're not really giving Blue the best of times, and he's got 21 villagers inside of his TC currently not working. And, guys, you know, I mentioned it before. If you ever want to get some easy wins, which I know everyone on the internet wants every now and then, every time this map comes into the pool, granted, if you're hearing this, other people are too, just go fast futile into water. <laughs> Isn't it? There's nothing else you can really do. And if you want to have fun, you can go demos on woodlines and whatnot. Especially this elo, because... I mean, shoot, even all the way up to like 15 or 1600. Players are still learning basics of the game. You know, you put a 20 minutes of practice into a build order and you execute, I think you'll be surprised. I'm speaking from experience. I lost to a 2k player in 13 minutes. Because he had a good build order to go fast feudal. And then I looked at his profile and it was... He just played all water nomad. That's all I did. And then when it's gone from the pool, all that elo is going to disappear. But, uh, you know, it can be fun. Not for the buffaloes, but maybe for you. I know that when this game started, there were probably many people who were like, Oh, I want the buffalo guy to win. But uh, the reason you rooted for buffalo is the reason buffalo will likely not have a chance here. But he is actually making docks, so, I mean, he's not mining gold. But he might know now to go for some navy, and hey, I mean, maybe there's a chance there. Could be fine. As a Malay player, I've noticed many times that if a fishing trap is built by a vill, ships will ignore it and re until retasked to it, really. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's a new thing, but I genuinely have not seen villagers building... Um, building fish traps until in WWC. I don't know what changed. You know what my theory is? Maybe what they did is, let's say there's vills here, and you have fishing ship, and you go like this, and you press fish trap hotkey, or you click fish trap, because you have the fishing ship in the selection. And you also have villagers in the selection. The villagers will build it. Okay. Well, blue is clearly stressed out now, trying to do what he feels is maybe the play to come back. The very uh, versatile map with lots of variety. <laughs> lots of different things you can do. 
Uh, Blue, though, bringing these back to the town center. The Toon Town Center is so many kills. This TC over here had four kills. This TC now has five kills. And there's only 10 kills in total for Blue. So, oh, all Blue needs to do is cover the entire town or the entire map with town centers. And then garrison, and then easy game. Well, if I know anything about low elo players, they're not exactly looking to put people out of their misery. They enjoy the misery. When you're ahead at this elo, you don't try and finish them off. You're like, oh, fun. I can do some cool stuff right now. But not, not that Red's doing that. He's not dragging it on. He's focused, right? But he's getting some upgrades now. Careening gives the ships more armor. Masonry gives your buildings more HP. Interesting is getting masonry. And he also has berserks, and I think he could click up to the Imperial Age here. It usually happens that they're building another building near a fish trap. In this case, they built the castle and then built the fish trap. The fishing had started. Oh, that makes sense because the fish trap is viewed as like a farm or a building. And so they finish building one thing and they go to build the next. Interesting. Yeah, that's probably it. I think you're right on that. Uh, Blue, the player who focused primarily on 50 buffalo for food and not efficient fishing, is now adding fishing ships. So honestly, if the order was reversed, Blue would have won this game already. Focus on fishing and a little buffalo, and then go feudal, instead of all buffalo, forever dark age. And then fishing ships. I mean, just adding fishing ships from the docks right here in the middle, too. Okay. <laughs> Thomas says, I watch these videos and think, yeah, these are great ideas. Then I switch the game on, forget everything, crumble, and get beat by the AI. Well, it's not an easy game to play. So we... we it's an easy game to, I think, watch and understand. Because it's, it's like... I don't know. It, it's hard to explain, I guess, my wording on this. As we see heated shot coming in. Holy upgrades. Um, yeah, like, Age of Empires is pretty easy to understand once you get the grasp, right? And it, I think when you're watching the flow of commentary, it's easy to think, why doesn't this person do that? Or, yeah, I can just do that myself. And then when you're in the game, in order to execute with any, like, real speed at all, you do need to have some practice. And I think what makes this, well, RTS is probably in general, but Age of Empires 2 so complicated is its depth. The reason this game has survived as long as it has is because of how many different maps there are. How many different civs there are. How many different ways a game can play out. Like, this is the first time, and I've spent 25, maybe 30,000 hours in Age of Empires 2. The first time I've seen one player with 50 buffaloes. I can honestly say that. And I'm talking community games, too. I don't recall a moment where someone has had that many buffaloes. Also, this mining camp has 6 HP, which is kind of funny. <laughs> it's like if they toss the gold uh, into the mining camp too hard, it's going to do damage to it, and it just crumbles. That is as weak as it gets for a mining camp. Blue got the eco lead somehow. Yeah, but he also has a bunch of idols. But also, the TC's doing work right now. Oh, no! Red's got a buffalo! No! He shot the buffalo! He's like, if I can't have it... He can't have it. What have you done? Not the buffalo. You're not kidding, though. Blue has 66 vils and it's 71 for red. Red, you've got to be careful you don't throw this game in. You have a massive lead. Look at the eco difference. This isn't even close. He's finally on his way to him. It will end up losing some of his control on water, but still has upgrades that Blue doesn't. So Blue doesn't have a single blacksmith upgrade. Um, so yeah, red, red will add more longboats, unique to the Vikings, of course. Longboats will hold on, and then we'll probably just see more berserks, more berserk upgrades. So let's talk sieves that are good for this, sieves that you might want to consider for this. Um, Persians. Persians probably top tier. Higher HP docks, you start with more wood and more food. Good nomad civilization, not bad. Uh, Vikings, one of the best as well. Red, again, the player who did at least play Land Nomad, or excuse me, Water Nomad before this, seemingly had a plan, right? Went for the galleys, 
mixes in infantry too later on. That's fine. But galley opening makes sense with the sieve. Uh, Italians, cheaper to go up to the next stage. Cheaper dock technologies. You could see Italians dominate here too. Maybe Portuguese. Um, you know, basically any sieve where you want to take control of water. You could make an argument for Saracens because Saracens... Oh no, the mining camp. They have faster firing galleys. Maybe Japanese, if I didn't say that already, because of their strong fish. Malay. More vision on their docks. Faster to the next stage. Great water technology. Great fishing eco. Not Teutons. But, like, this is also a player who's picked Teutons and hasn't made a single farm. I feel like that also has to be a first. He's kind of just playing tower defense, waiting out with 40 villagers inside town centers right now. Hoping their red gets close. I really hope Blue says something. Before he resigns, I hope Blue is like, I have no clue how to play this map or something. Because it... No offense, Blue. Well, okay, this is why I'm so confused. Because, yes, he doesn't know how to play the map. We can agree on that. But how did he know there were going to be that many buffalo? Like... <laughs> He, he was compelled really early on to find those buffalo. So maybe he realized, oh, there seems to be a lot on this map. I can use the fishing ships. I I just, no offense to the 600s out there, I find it hard to believe that he went into that with zero knowledge on the map and then scouted 100% of it to find buffalo like that. So I feel like he knew something. I don't know. Also, that's pretty cool. Very rarely do you see the elite symbol next to each other. Elite Longbow and Elite Berserk. So again, Red's got experience here. He knows those exist. Like Elite Longbow, a lot of players might forget. Maybe Blue doesn't know he can place farms on this terrain. Yo, that's not a bad theory. And he hasn't made a mill. Oh my god, you're so right, guys. I think he's probably so confused as to why how the enemy has so much food eco to do this stuff. That is a really good theory. I think he doesn't know. He doesn't have a mill, so there's no way for him to find out. Because when you try and place a farm without building a mill, you just can't. Also, he doesn't have a blacksmith up blacksmith upgrade, so... Hmm. And the buffalo thing, maybe he reads the descriptions. Does it say that? Does it say... Can can someone please tell me what the description says in the game for Water Nomad? Now I'm really curious. Meanwhile, the Berserks and the Navy are just shredding all the houses. So Blue now that has no pop space. He's going to make more houses. So at least he realizes that. We have Bracer on the way, which makes the Longboat stronger. Obviously, this just means that Blue is going to get wrecked more and more. Zerks are elite. Still missing an upgrade here or there, but still very strong. Not strong enough, though, to take all this out. I think this would need to be addressed with some siege of some kind. But Red's having fun, you know? Red's having fun. Not very often that you get to pick a map and just your opponent's completely clueless and you're like, ha, 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 ha. I did my homework, you noob, you know? Maybe Red feels like a god. It was interesting because he lost... The other game he played on Water Nomad, you would think, like, if he was the one, and that's my theory, favoriting it, that he'd have an idea. Um, still no one has said what the description says for that map. I'm curious. By the way, death in the shape of a handsome Italian. There's a, a little chat bug right now. If you just look at the pinned comment, you can see what the issue is to fix it if you want to. Yeah, Red, Red's just having fun. Red's just having fun. This is this is pretty simple stuff for him, right? He's gonna drop another castle. He's maybe needs to queue up a few more berserks. He's still got his longboats doing work. And blue. Still no farm, still no mill. Still seemingly no clue on what to do. And I'm I agree. I'm glad you guys said it. He probably doesn't know you can build on this terrain. Not only is this map not hugely strategically diverse, there's like, I feel like there's one way to play it, but also it's incredibly confusing <laughs> for, for new players. So, 
at least if you watch this and you play ranked and you don't like Water Nomad, if you ever get it, you should know someone has favorited it and they likely either heeded my words or already figured it out that they can play confused people on this map and get some wins. Yeah, let's fast forward a little bit. Red doesn't seem... I don't know how far behind we are. We are live. Red doesn't seem too interested in finishing this guy off anytime soon. Blue doesn't seem too interested in tapping out. I feel like there's arguments to be made that maybe he should have resigned quite a while ago. But, you know, he, he wants to make his opponent earn it. I can't wait to look at his kills. Okay, so this castle has zero. This TC has nine. This TC has 17. This has 10. 17, 9, uh, 26. 36 of his 54 kills came from TCs and castles. I'm sure he's got more kills from other things here, too. Okay, we now have Berserker Gang here for Red, and he's going to queue up more Berserks, and I think once he get the Berserks, he can just go in. Teutons do have murder holes here, so it is kind of tough to take the castles out. You could do a lot of different things, though. But Red knows, or should know, this game is mine and is just having fun, you know? There's no stress anymore. There's no frustration, which can happen times in ranked play. So I don't blame them. When they when players like this get ahead, they're just like, let's keep going. Let's take our time. Because very rarely in ranked play are you going to see players dominate others like this. It just comes down to the fact that Blue didn't really know what to do. And in his mind, he was like, well, I need food. It actually makes perfect sense if he doesn't know he can make farms. If you need food, you got to hoard the buffaloes. Because the fish will run out someday. Okay, now Blue doesn't want to resign. Red actually found him over here, which is kind of funny. Okay. So I wonder if Red's going to send something over there. <laughs> Blue has the largest navy with no upgrades I've ever seen in my life. Zero upgrades. Not really going to work out well. You can see the big range difference and attack difference. Resign, man. It's okay, dude. It's all right. This isn't your map. You lost your buffalo. It's fine. And he calls the GG. And Red gives him the GG back. Respect to both of them for that. Obviously, Blue might be sitting here confused and frustrated, so I'd like to see the respect. And Sancho Ponzo, congratulations, my friend. I would bet quite a bit of cash that the next time he plays Age of Empires 2 this week, it's going to be on Water Nomad and that he's favoriting it. Uh, <laughs> so... With the ranked system, you can ban things. You can favorite things. Some people might not know to ban Water Nomad if they don't want to face this. Um, yeah, I'm curious if there was maybe any additional chat from them after. No, it doesn't look like there was. Occasionally, there can be some chat. I have to tab into the game to see that. But wow. Well, it wasn't the most competitive game. I still hope people enjoyed this one. Um, it was unique in how the players open. I think that someone hit the nail on the head. I think Blue didn't know. That you can farm on this terrain as you can see you've got the the farms over here technically the rice farms which is what they're called if they're on the uh this type of terrain also maybe didn't know about fish traps too because that could have gone a long way but yeah just reverse the order there if you're blue but congratulations buddy because you had a lot of water buffaloes <laughs> and hopefully at least that was entertaining <laughs> but kudos to him i'm actually gonna look right now what's the description of this map because I don't have anyone in chat telling me. Let's look. Go to the maps. Maybe it says something about the water buffalo. One sec. A handful of villagers with fishing ships look to settle. And there is plenty of marsh jungle to get lost in. That's all it says. Nothing about buffaloes. I will repeat myself. Blue scouted Red's farms three times. They definitely knew. Well, maybe he didn't realize because he was still mourning the loss of his buffaloes. Let's not assume that he noticed that it was a farm, okay? Maybe he thought it was like some type of unique building that the Vikings get that people with, with hoes and farming tools walk over to and get food from. It's not a farm. You can't farm on that terrain. Are you kidding me?